Now we continue our discussion. This is the fourth part of a series of discussions. Uh, in the in the third part of the discussion, we show that uh, we chose the second position as the new motive starting position uh, for the first sequence. So this is our first sequence, and the second position was chosen as the uh, was sampled randomly sampled uh, to be the uh, first position for our motive. Now once we have this, uh, the next thing we do is we repeat the whole process uh, but this time we use a new uh, sequence for sampling. Remember in the, uh, in the previous discussions we chose the first sequence as the sequence for sampling and then we use the three table three remaining unchosen tables uh sequences as the sequences for building the probability uh probability tables uh used to sample the first sequence but now now that we're finished with that and we chose the second position as the new motive starting position for the first sequence the next thing we do is we choose a, uh we choose a new sequence for sampling in this case for simplicity we simply iterate through each of these and uh, the next one in the iteration is the second sequence so now we choose the second sequence here as the sequence for sampling and so we try to isolate the second sequence uh, and then the remaining unchosen sequences in this case the first sequence the third sequence and the fourth sequence these are your unchosen sequence we use these three sequences as the sequences to build the probability tables and uh, once we build the probability tables uh, we just follow the whole process again uh, once we're finished with the probability the tables we try to find uh, a new motive position for the second sequence so we try to find a we try to sample for a randomly sample for a new uh, new motive starting position for this second sequence here just as we did for the first sequence so uh, here once we're finished with the second sequence we do it for the third sequence we repeat the whole process for the third sequence and then once we're finished with the third sequence we repeat it for the fourth sequence so we repeat the whole processes we iterate the whole process through each of the sequences for which we f want to obtain the motive positions in and once we iterate through all of these sequences we actually proceed with a continuing process uh, of repeating the whole process all over again uh, and eventually we hope that uh, we would obtain some kind of convergence meaning that uh, the positions we obtain for the first sequence for the second sequence for the third and the, for the fourth somehow they they stop moving and when they stop moving uh, we say that convergence has happened and these are probability uh, probability these are probably the best uh, positions motive positions uh, for the motives so remember at the start we were trying to look for the positions where the Gataka positions are located uh, the Gataka motif are located. So if we look at this sequence here, uh, this motif position here has a motif that has that appears to follow the Gataka sequence G A T T A C A. Your Gataka sequence, and uh, the only difference is the first one here, and then the fourth one over here. So here we have two uh, deviations from the Gataka motif. In the second sequence, uh, you have one here and then you have another here so we again we have two deviations from the Gataka consensus motif and then for the third one we have one here one deviation here and then we have another deviation here so uh, we have another uh, we have two deviations again for the third and then for the fourth we have one here one deviation here and then another deviation here so we for each of these sequences uh, these motive positions give uh, deviations of at most two uh, residues. So these positions they they show the Gataka sequence uh, or the Gataka motive uh, more or less quite well, ex except for two 
residue positions at most. Now, the Gibbs sampling method, in summary, is a way to obtain uh, the positions of a, of, of a certain consensus motif in a given sequence in a given series of sequences but the problem is with the Gibbs sampling method is that uh, if the the motif is weakly um, is weakly manifested in each of the in each of the sequences meaning some sequences would have uh, the gata uh, for instance the gataka motif but they would have several deviations from it so it's the motif is existent uh, but it's not very clearly uh, shown, uh, meaning that the co it does not, the the motif in some of the sequences may not um, very well match the consensus motif, and so if you have some sequences which manifest the consensus motif weakly, then you would need to have very large sets of sequences in order to obtain some kind of statistical significance for the motif positions. The next thing is uh, the Gibbs sampling motif is probabil probabilistic in nature. And because it's very probabilistic in nature, it's very heuristic, uh, you don't have a guarantee that you would obtain an optimal value, meaning a, a, a convergence uh, answer wherein uh, each of the motif positions give you the true uh, positions of the motif. Uh, motive positions in each of the sequences because remember uh, what we're doing here is we're counting the probabilities and then we're, ran we're sampling for each iteration we're sampling randomly based on the weights given by the probabilities in the probability tables so everything is ran uh, each of these motive positions are somewhat randomly chosen uh, but they are chosen in such a way that uh, you choose them based on, on some kind of probability weights. So uh, it's not perfect because there's some kind of element of randomness. And if you have an element of randomness, then uh, it tends, sometimes you may miss the most optimal uh, probability. And so often uh, or sometimes you may not obtain the optimal uh, motive positions for all of the sequences. But uh, it's not always that bad because since you're you're randomly sampling, uh, and you're not always strictly sticking to the probability weights, then you can sometimes avoid local optimum, um, local minima problems or complications because uh, remember if we don't uh, if we don't sample randomly and we just choose the 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 motive position. Uh, we just sample the motive position with the highest probability, then uh, there are chances that we may meet some local optimum or local minimum problems and get stuck there in the local minimum. And so by randomly sampling, uh, we are sometimes able to uh, we are sometimes able to uh, avoid these local minimum problems and thereby reach the global, uh, minimum or global optimum uh, motive positions. Now, another bad thing about the Gibbs sampling uh, is that you have to specify an estimate of the width of your motif uh, because, uh, like for instance, for the example here, we estimate uh, we gave the algorithm uh, an estimate of seven residues as the length of the motif. Uh, so this is one. Um, disadvantage of the Gibbs sampling method because you have to provide the an estimate of the motive width and then uh, but a good thing about the Gibbs sampling method is that it's a very iterative process and each of these iterations you can actually inspect how the probability tables look like and how the motive positions uh, move uh, during the iterations and sometimes the final convergent answer may not actually be the most optimal result and sometimes you have to look at the the suboptimal results or the the motive positions from the previous iterations and maybe some of those previous iterations would have 
motif positions that visually look uh, better than the actual convergent answer. And so here, uh, the Gibbs sampling motif allows us, uh, gives us a way to inspect the, the previous iterations and thereby uh, visually check or manually check if there are some uh, supposedly suboptimal results that are actually the best results. And one more good thing about the Gibbs sampling method is that uh, it runs in linear time. Your n here standing for the number of sequences. And so for this presentation, uh, my main reference was this here. I used the example from uh, this lab over here by Blackas. And uh, I also consulted this review paper by Ruchka. Uh, but the original paper is really from uh, the original paper from for the Gibbs sampling method is really by by the Lawrence uh, in 1993 in the science paper. So if you want to look at the original, uh, look at it uh, Lawrence 1993 Gibbs sampling uh, for motif uh, detection. But this paper here is uh, it simplifies the whole. The, the this the discussion for the Gibbs sampling. So you may try to look up look this up here uh, to understand the notations and uh, there there's actually an example here a a quite elaborative example on the uh, Gibbs sampling method and you may I would recommend that you you read this uh, simplified um, article on the Gibbs sampling method. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something.